What is up everybody? It is Aug here back with another video. We just finished dinging level 59 live on stream, which means tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern, we are going to be doing the final level and hitting 60. So if you guys haven't tuned in yet, definitely tune into the Twitch. But to take a quick recap, basically where we left off before we were level 32. And so we continued grinding up, but at level 32, these pools were very tough. And so a lot of them looked like that where I died. So you can see the death count arose up to 49 deaths already by this point, because this was actually getting pretty tough to kill them. Eventually though, we did hit level 33 and we were able to kind of get into a groove and we stayed here until we were 37. Now I thought about leaving at 36, but I ended up staying till 37 because just this, this spot's really good. There's two large groups right here. And then also if you time things right, you have the spawn over here as well, which is basically just this padding spawn of mobs, which I'll show in a sec, and they spawn every six minutes. And so what you can do, or roughly six minutes, and so what you could do is you could basically clear all the spawns, and then by the time you finish the end of them, the new mobs are respawning, and it just works out perfectly. So this is a fantastic spawn around this level for the Alliance. You do have to watch out for situations like this where you have one mob stray loose, be ready to sheep him, and then get off a rank one blizzard for the front mobs, or even maybe even max rank blizzard. Step over to the side, definitely take wide routes so you can get the Novas and not get hit. With adequate gear, I mean, obviously I'm in bad gear, you shouldn't be running out of mana, and so you can definitely get these farms down. And I'll have a more detailed kind of analysis of how to do these, but you can see right here, those mobs just spawn. So what you try to do, and what I try to do, is clear out this farm, then this farm, and then have those spawns and clear out these outlying mobs with them. Alternatively, you could try to do this farm, a portion over here, and then do those mobs that spawned right there, that pat alongside some of these mobs, but it might get too overwhelming. Definitely when you're starting, just take care of those, the pat along with any mobs around them, and that should be good. There's also some mobs around the perimeter, and so it comes down to be about four pools, but we were able to pull off some insane experience per hour here, leveling probably at about, you know, an hour to hour and a half a level on average. So as I said, once we hit 37, we decided to head over to the Murlocs Northeast Dust Wallow Marsh. I recommend if you want, you can get some of these quests to start, but definitely make sure you go over to the west side of Theramore Isle right here, just in this, this encampment kind of area, and go into the building that is right to the left after the Flight Master. Go upstairs and buy three spice goods from the vendor inside of there. Uh, actually, it might be on the downstairs level, but buy three spice goods. That's going to allow you to complete a quest that's right outside the city, right when you get that, and it's just some free experience. Outside of that, set your hearthstone and get ready for the Murlocs pools. They're gonna be in northeastern Dustwalla Marsh. And so here we are with the Murlocs. There's probably about three groups, or sorry, four groups that you're gonna pool, but you definitely need to leverage bra block, and you definitely need to watch out for the pats. The coast runners are so fast, and my stream was warning me a ton about how quick they are, but I just didn't really think about the gravity of how quick they are. But they pat around like crazy and will jump into combat like it is nobody's business. So you definitely need to get used to their padding and watch out for them. There you can see one just coming in with the polymorph right there. And so I need to be able to get off some slows on the other mobs and get the Nova. Otherwise, we just have to bail. And what ultimately ended up happening a ton is that we were just constantly bailing throughout the run trying to basically stay alive and get as many kills as we can until we kind of got into a pattern. And so again, I'm gonna have that in a video separately kind of showing you guys that pattern that I would recommend in order to be taking them out. But ultimately, we ended up dying a lot. I would also recommend bringing pots if you aren't on a world record challenge. These creeping molds don't hit often, but every 10 seconds they are gonna hit for about 20 damage. I think it's exactly 20 damage every single time. And that can stack up really fast. So you don't wanna get into the situation where those stack up too much and you just end up dying. As you'll see, eventually they'll just tick off damage from you the entire time. But this spot is really good. We were able to get some of these levels going incredibly fast at this spot, and you can honestly do it if you want all the way to 42. I decided that I was going to do it till 40 though. And one other thing is that we are currently way low on our mount. I don't know if you can see up at the top there, but we have 42 gold. There's death, for example. We died a lot at this spot. But there's 42 gold that we have. We have about 10 gold in the bank in silk cloth and mage weave cloth, but we somehow need to get to the mount before ZF. Otherwise, we have to do ZF without the mount. And so we farmed here until we were 40. And unfortunately, we did not get enough gold. And you can see here, 
here we are. We have 65 gold to our name. Now we did buy abilities because I decided I'm not going to hit them out. I might as well get the abilities so we could try, give it our best try. I had done ZF at level 40 before with invis pots and no mount. I had done ZF at 40 with a mount. I had never done ZF without invis pots and without a mount while having horrible gear. Look at my health, 1130 health. My mana, about 2700. If you guys haven't seen the video detailing how I pulled off the ZF farm at this level, definitely go check it out. I'll have it linked up above and in the description down below so you guys can check it out. But this pool was pretty wild. And somebody on our stream actually made a bet that I couldn't do it on the first try for 100 subs. And I actually lost it on the first try for the most ridiculous reason. I tried a new strat that I had never tried before. And unfortunately, it's a strat that does not work for gnomes. I was thinking, all right, this is going to at least help me get there a little bit safely. So let me do that strat and I'll do that strat and I'll figure it out. And unfortunately, it caused me to die. But the very next attempt, we actually were able to pull off the kill. Now, the kill took about 15 minutes to do the ZF1 pull. And if you guys haven't done the ZF1 pull, this is probably about the most fun that you're going to have in the game. But the kill took about 15 minutes. But in the end, it was worth it. Watch this XP bar fly, guys. If you missed just a second ago, we were at about one bar into the level. We're getting 900 XP a kill, and every single kill jumps up the XP bars by about 20% of an individual bar. And you can see that we're already at five bars, about to be at six bars. The XP at this level is ludicrous. You're talking half of a level of run. If you have gear and you appropriately do your strats with evocates, burning all your mana, evocating, using rank one, you can do about 15 minute clears while getting half a level. And you can ding from 40 to 41 in about 30 minutes. Highly recommend checking out that video, figuring it out. If you guys haven't done the ZF pool before, it is so much fun and it was crazy to do at this level and so hype. So that was a ton of fun. We ended up staying here until about uh, 54, but we did intermingle in some Ungoro. At about 46-ish or 45, we started intermingling the scarabs in every single run. Now we started off killing the scarabs separately, but eventually we got to the point where we could kill the scarabs with the other tunes, other mobs. And you can see here that we still only have 1400 health, so our gear is not great. But if you guys aren't killing the scarabs with the other mobs, I highly recommend it. It's actually honestly not that difficult to be able to kill them as well and do it safely. You just have to make sure that you blink appropriately when stacking all the mobs up in this room in the GY room. So what I mean by that is when we come out of the scarab room, and if you guys haven't seen how to aggro all the scarabs before, definitely check out the video where we do these combined. There's a certain way that we want to aggro the mobs and blink. And so what we're going to do here is we're actually going to slow it down a little bit. We're going to come over to the right. We're going to face pull these guys. And then we're going to blink over into this dead space here. You can see that none of these mobs are able to hit us. So we drop a Nova, cold snap for resists, Nova again. And at that point, none of the mobs are on us. We're still at 100% HP. We're up to this pillar right here. And then from here, we can jump up to the top. And in this back section right here, mobs will actually start running. So then you can just aggro the mobs just like you normally would. But now you also have the scarabs and the kill. The scarabs give an extra about two bars of experience to run. So if you can get the scarabs and the kill, you're going to get a ton more XP. And it's going to be fantastic. So at 51, we started to just leave ZF, right? Because we were starting to get locked out. I had to run out of ZF every single time because of the instance lockout. But we still were, or because of the instance logging out kind of thing. And I couldn't abuse lockouts. By the way, have you guys seen GameStop? It is now up to like 300 bucks. This is absolutely insane what's been going on in the stock market. So if you don't follow the stock market, you probably should. If you do, definitely join the chat because love talking about it. Also a financial coach on the side, love talking about the stock market. Anyways, back to the leveling. So basically, we were going a little bit too fast. And because we were going a little bit too fast, we were going to get locked out and we either had to sit there and wait for the lockouts to come back which would not have been fun. Or the idea that I thought of was basically to go to Angoro, start running through the quest just like I normally would, get the flight path so that when we lock ourselves out, we can then run over to Angoro, do some quests when the lockout was up, hearth back to Tsnaris, do ZF, and just rinse and repeat all the way through 54. That way, once we hit 54, we had all the quests done and we were just ready to plow through Angoro. That was at least the plan. What turns out happening or what, what turned out happening 
is that the game RNG hated me. Now, this may have been a component of being on a small server, but basically what happened is that there were no green power crystals in Alamangoro. I, I mean, I'm not kidding, guys. There were no green crystals in all of Angoro. I ran around for 20 minutes. We wasted 20 minutes of the world record trying to find green crystals. And all we found were blue, red, and yellow. I must have found 30 red. And ultimately what I decided to do later on after we had decided we're doing Angora for good now, I literally had to loot all the blue, red, and yellow to hope that green would spawn. And eventually they did. But this was ludicrous, guys. So I guess there is one con of going on a low pop server, and that's that if all the green are looted, nobody else is looting them to respawn the green. So my Angora plan didn't work perfectly, but you can kind of see here the lockouts. We're going at this point at as low as about 10 minutes a run, and that's even with running out of the instance. And so once we hit 53, we got about halfway through 53, and then we decided, all right, at this point, we're going to go over to Angoro, finish all of the quests while we wait for the lockout, and then come back, and then once we have 54 from ZF, we could just go over there, turn in all the quests, and we're going to be about 54 and a half. If you guys didn't know, Angoro is about an hour and a half to burn through all the quests, if there's green power crystals. And then you can get about a level and a half if you had AoE grinded there to while you were leveling up. So it's a really good experience. Now, it's not ZF. ZF's going to be faster, especially if you're using proper logout mechanics. But it's pretty good, guys, to get some serious XP. So we headed back over there and started plowing through those quests. Eventually, we got all the way to level 54, pretty much. And I decided it would be smart to try to risk the next CF pool. So what do I mean by this? Well, I decided to run around the side, and then I had a bunch of mobs on top of me. And then I thought I was fine, took a health pot, was running along the side. Nova, those guys still got hit from leeway and got shadow bolted around the side of the pillar and died. GG, myself. So we didn't hit the level, but we were able to res, hit the level 54 just from turning in the quest back in uh, Tanaris that we had saved up. But this actually played a role later on because I wasn't able to hit 55 as easily as I had hoped because I didn't have those extra two bars of experience. Those two bars of experience actually came back into play big time. But now that we were 54, it was time to turn in all of the Ungoro quests. So here we're starting off at about 6% of our XP bar. And just look at the amount of experience that we're getting. Each quest is about three-fifths of a bar. There's about probably like eight quests you can bucket up, including the power bar experience. We'll speed this up a little bit. So if you guys aren't doing this, I highly recommend it. Now, if you're wondering why I waited until I hit level 54, a quest that is yellow or red or the first level into green is going to give the same amount of experience. The mobs in ZF, however, are constantly giving less and less experience once you hit level 46. And so the idea was to basically grab all the quests I could possibly have, turn them all in at one time, and just get massive amounts of experience to make up for the lost experience with killing the mobs and not do it too early, where at once, once I'm 54, I'm basically just stuck waiting. And the goal is to get to 55 so we can get over to Dancing Trolls. So we turned in all them and we went up to six bars into the level so you can see that we got a very good amount. It wasn't as much as I was expecting, to be honest, but it was a pretty darn good amount. So we started off by running over to Sorrow Hill. Sorrow Hill is a fantastic farming location. Tons of mobs, you can group them up, but we ran into a paladin. Now, the funny thing about this is that at the time, I believe that there were only something like 13 people that were level 60 on the server. And one was a paladin. That was exactly where I was going to farm. <laughs> Gotta love the RNG, guys. It was pretty hysterical. Two people total in the Western Plaguelands, as you can see right there. But this is a great place. Now, you need to, as an alliance, knock out this quest first so you can get the quest to go to the cauldrons. And the cauldrons are the big XP quests in Western Plaguelands. Basically, you go to each of the different cauldron areas, kill the main boss there, turn in at the cauldron, get a key, and then from there you're set. And you can get out of there and, and you're good to go. Most of the cauldrons are pretty easy. First cauldron is only level 52 mobs. So we make pretty quick work of it. Just burn down the mobs that are, are near the actual cauldron, turn in, turn it in, and then go back to Chowin Camp. Each time we do this, it's about 7k experience. The next one isn't bad as well. It's Dawson's Tears. Dawson's Tears is a fantastic AOE leveling spot, and I'm going to show you exactly why. There are a ton of mobs, guys. 
a ton of mobs. There's like three different packs you can kill. Now, the only thing is you have to blink away after your Nova. If you don't blink away after your Nova, the mobs actually have a fear. And what's going to happen is that you can get feared, knock it off your blizzard in time, and then you're just going to die. So I recommend Nova, blink away, blizzard, blizzard, Nova. Even if you get feared then, you should be okay. Get off that last blizzard or two blizzards to get down the mobs. But this is a great farming location to burn from 52 plus. But we were just focusing mainly on getting 60 rune cloth for a cloth turn in, as well as getting the uh, the cauldron keys. And so we got this cauldron and we continued on through. And it was about this point where we met a bet, made a bet with Bola that by the end of the hour, we couldn't ding. And so, you know, we would be close, but we had a lot of experience that we needed to get. And so in order to pull this off, I'd had to get pretty risky. And by pretty risky, I mean, with two minutes left, we were on the final cauldron. Now I am about four and a half bars away from dinging. I have potential to doing this. If I can get this cauldron turned in and get the cloth turned in in Darnassus quick enough to turn to my Angora soil, I can pull it off. But now there's only one minute left. And the unfortunate part is that, as I said, the cauldrons kind of increase with mob XP or mob level. And these cauldrons have 58 and I'm a level 54, very undergeared mage. And it didn't go well, guys. Every single time, pretty much looked just like this, where every single time I tried to kill Cauldron Lord Soul Wrath, I'd aggro a couple mobs. This time, I was able to get him down. And this was the first time that we aggroed him. The bad news was I burned every single cooldown in order to get him down. You can see me cold snap, get him down to 65 HP block, waiting for mana regen so I can try to get a fire blast off on him. Get the kill on him, try to get away, but then ultimately I die right here, I think. Yeah, yeah, I got away. And then the mobs were actually really far behind me and still casting my blessing kill me. And this started a death gauntlet. I know joke died for the next 30 minutes. Don't do this quest at 54. I beg of you. Whatever you do, do not do this quest at 54. You're just going to die a lot. Just don't do it. But I did it after 30 minutes. So made a lot of mistakes along this world record attempt, guys, but we were able to hit 55. And at 55 was the point where we decided to go to Dark Shore Trolls. Dark Shore Trolls. Shatter Spear Trolls. Dancing Trolls. Now, I can't show you that footage because it was technically uh, today's stream. But I can tell you guys, it is freaking awesome. We're talking up to 140,000 experience per hour, killing some groups with 26 mobs per go. So if you guys haven't seen it yet, definitely tune into the stream tomorrow to be able to see it. I'm eventually gonna be making a highlight video of it, but it is a fantastic farm. I'm also gonna be showing exactly how to get there in a video. So definitely stay tuned for that. Hopefully, though, this recap was a good time for you guys. I did not win the bullet bet, but I did get some incredible, incredible support from incredibly generous people in the stream. So thank you so much, everyone, for supporting me along the way. We are level 59. We got one more day, and then we are going to hit 60. So I will see you guys tomorrow. All right, everyone, that wraps up today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you did, please subscribe and leave a like and a comment below to let me know so. And if you guys have any other ideas for any other videos, please let me know in the comments below. Also, check out the description for the Twitch where I do all this live. And also for my Twitter and Discord where you guys can be notified of any future updates and when I'm going to go live on stream. So I'll see you guys in the next video.